Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another real tale with you. Friends, today's story is about a case which happened many years ago. Story, this story is 62 years old. Despite its time, this tale remains incredibly intriguing and astonishing because it involves the murder of ghosts. People still listen to this story with great interest because the court's decision at that time will always be remembered in India's history. So, let's begin this story and find out what happened in it that has made it so famous to this day. Upon hearing this, you must be amazed how someone can kill ghosts, but such an incident did happen in this story, known as the Ram Bahadur Thapa and the murder of ghost case. What is the behind of this story? Who was murdered in this story? And what punishment was given according to the law? Who was the murderer in this case? You will also learn about a law in this story that you may have never heard of before. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, this story is from many years ago, specifically from May 1958, and it is the story of Rasgovind village in Odisha. There was a small airport near this village which was used by the defense police, but after some time it was decided to close the airport. When the decision was made to close the airport, there was a valuable treasure lying there. However, when the airport was closed, the treasure was not taken away, and as a result, it remained there and started deteriorating. Some items turned into scrap. Now the defense police felt that if no one was here, anyone could come from outside and steal all these things. So they posted two guards there named Devakar and Govind. Around 1958, the defense department willing to sell that scrap, and the information is reached to Jagat Bandhu Chatterjee, who runs a company called Chatterjee Brothers in Kolkata. Then, in April 1958, he came to Odisha to buy this scrap, along with his domestic helper named Ram Bahadur Thapa. Ram Bahadur Thapa was a Nepali man, but he had been working at Jagat Bandhu's house for the past few years. Then both of them reached the village, and when they reached there, they found out that it would take them a long time to buy all this stuff. Then they search for a house in the village, and then they stay at the house of Acha, a man named Krishna Chandra, as tenants. Krishna Chandra used to run a tea shop near the closed airport, and both Jagat Bandhu and Ram Behadur Thapa were now living at his house. Along with this, they was also involved in the process of buying scrap. There was a village near airport where many people used to live. If people had to go to any village, they had to go through the route of this closed airport because the airport was right next to the surrounding villages. During the day, people used to come and go there easily, but at night that area became completely deserted and no one came or went from there because people believed that at night the route of the airport was inhabited by ghosts and people did not like to go through that route at night. They were scared because it seemed like a very scary road. Even if any person had to go through that route at night, they did not go. They preferred to stay in any village rather than go to their house. In May 1958, Jagat Bandhu and his servant, Ram Bahadur Thapa, were sitting at Krishna Chandra's shop. It was nighttime, and a man named Chandramaji, who lived in the nearby village, came to them. He told Krishna Chandra that he wanted to stay there tonight and didn't want to go to his village through that road. Jagat Bandhu and his servant knew all about this as they had heard many stories. When Jagat Bandhu heard that man's words, he suggested him that they could leave him at his home and also see the ghosts they had heard so many stories about. Initially, Chandramji did not believe him and told him that he would regret it later. No one wanted to go to that place, but why did he want to go? Jagat, however, assured him that they were with him and would leave him safely at his home. And then the Chandramji tells them that if Krishna Chandra also joins us, then I can come. Then Jagat Bandhu and Ram Bahadur Thapa start convincing Krishna Chandra, and then Krishna Chandra agrees, and they all start walking towards the that man house. They had left at night, but these people did not have any self-defense weapons. However, Ram Bahadur Thapa had a kukuri for sure, which for those who do not know, is a traditional Nepali weapon that people of Nepali origin often keep for their security. In other words, he had a small knife, and Ram Bahadur Thapa also had a torch. They all walk some distance and safely reach that man house, and when they are returning, they say that they had a desire to see his ghost, but as they come a little further, they see some commotion on the way to the airport, 
and see a light there which is flickering, they understand that there is a group of ghosts dancing there. And they all become happy that finally they have seen the ghost, and they start running towards them quickly, happy to see the ghosts. Ram Bahadur Thapa runs so fast in the joy of seeing the ghosts that the other two people lag behind and he moves quite ahead. And when Ram Bahadur Thapa reaches near the light, he takes out his knife and starts waving it in the air. He was waving the knife because he was trying to kill the ghosts, and he didn't even realize that his two companions were not with him either. He is alone there. Ram Bahadur Thapa doesn't care about anyone. He just keeps waving his knife blindly. He wasn't paying attention to anything. He was considered crazy by the ghosts. And at this time, Krishna Chandra also comes there, and Ram Bahadur Thapa doesn't even see him. He just keeps waving the knife quickly, and the knife hits Krishna Chandra once or twice as well, and he starts shouting. And then Jagat Bandhu also comes after that, and he stands a little distance away and sees that Krishna Chandra is shouting, and there are two or three more women's voices coming from there, and Ram Bahadur Thapa, like a madman, is waving the knife there, and the Jagat Bandhu yells at Ram Bahadur Thapa, and after a while, Ram Bahadur Thapa comes back to his senses when he hears the voices of several women approaching. As he walks, he shines his torch and sees the scene in front of him, making everyone surprised. On the other side, Krishna Chandra, who was lying on the ground, was yelling. When they see that there are three women in front of them, one woman is lying on the ground and two women are yelling in pain. They are surprised and wonder what is happening. They think that they were killing ghosts. Where did these women come from? When he shines his torch and sees clearly, he realizes that these women are not ghosts, but the women from the neighboring village who had come to pluck Mahua flowers. Those women had also come to pluck those flowers, but Ram Bahadur mistakenly thought of those women as ghosts and attacked them. Meanwhile, one woman among those three women dies, and the other two women and Krishna Chandra are severely injured. The next morning, the news of this incident reaches the police. And then the police arrested Ram Bahadur Thapa for the murder of a woman and injuring three others. The case was about murder, and people thought Ram Bahadur would get a severe punishment. However, the court made a decision that surprised everyone. Ram Bahadur Thapa's lawyer presented in court that Ram Bahadur had accidentally killed one of those women, not knowing that they were there to collect flowers. He mistook them for ghosts and attacked them, but he did not intend to kill them. For this reason, the lawyer asked the court not to punish Ram Bahadur Thapa. The court acknowledged that Ram Bahadur Thapa was unaware of the presence of those women, but he still committed an act that warranted some punishment. The case was very complex, so the court proceedings continued for a long time, and in 1959, the session court acquitted Ram Bahadur Thapa without any punishment, and he was released from jail. Now the point is, what is Section 79? Section 79 is that if a person commits a crime unknowingly, then he cannot be punished, and then the court, after hearing all the evidence and arguments, decides whether Ram Bahadur Thapa had absolutely no idea that the women were there, and he was attacking them thinking they were ghosts. In this case, Ram Bahadur Thapa is acquitted, but the case is again included in the Odisha High Court, and there too, Ram Bahadur Thapa is released in this case without any charges being filed against him. Then, another case was mentioned in the court, which was of 1952. In that, there was a man named Chiranji, who was going up the mountain to pick flowers with his son. When he was on the top of the mountain, his foot slipped and he fell down the mountain, and when he fell down, his head hit a rock, and after hitting the rock, he lost his memory, and now he couldn't recognize anyone. At that time, his son came near him, and he attacked his son, and at that time, his son died. And then this case went to court, and the court said that Chiranji's mind was not in his control at that time, so he attacked his son, and his son died, but he did not do all this intentionally, and the court also released him. And when another thing came up in Ram Bahadur Thapa's case, it came up in court once that Ram Bahadur Thapa had a torch with him, but he did not use it. The court's argument was that if he had known even a little bit, he would have definitely used the torch and seen the place, but when he heard the word ghost there, he believed in the word and did not even think of lighting the torch. This proves that he did not do all this knowingly. I am sure a question must be coming to everyone's mind. 
Whether Jagat Bandhu who bought the scrap or not, no one knows about this. Everyone was so tangled in this court case that no one wanted to know about this other thing. So this was today's story. Thank you for joining us on this journey today. We hope you enjoyed the content and found it valuable.